Hello, it's Tubal Kane. This is episode number 39B, the answer in my What Is It Mystery Tool series. Thanks for watching. The first item was identified by many, and it is a KD465 tool used to uh, help you remove front shocks, shock absorbers from some of these older cars, totally obsolete now because of McPherson struts. I removed a million shock absorbers busted up my knuckles with one of these. I had no clue there even was such a thing. But of course the idea here is that these slots here went onto the top of the threaded uh, stud that came up through the tower and of course they immediately rounded off even with the vice grips because they've been on there for years. This was I think to install it. You would screw that onto the end and then it it could be pulled up and held in place while you get back underneath and do some work, but you know, it was never any fun changing those shock absorbers. A lot of people knew what that was. Item two, this is an Eagle brand cartridge fuse puller. Large fuses in one end. That way you could pull the the spent fuse out of a, a live fuse box small end for that size. Some people thought this was for removing spark plug wires and I suppose it would work but it's going to pull those rubber boots off. That's not what it's designed for. And here's some of the older ones. They were more made of a almost like a Bakelite or a fiber. Two sizes there and there's one for the real little fuses. So that's a fuse puller. I was surprised how many people knew what this was, although I think they saw the name because I showed the name and uh, they looked it up. But that name supposedly is also involved in a lot of lawsuits for those uh, ambulance chasing lawyers. I don't watch ads so I wouldn't know for sure. It is not made of titanium. It is stainless steel. It's quite heavy. Very high quality stainless steel so I suppose it could be uh, put in an autoclave and all of that stuff so nice tool I'll never use it but they said it's something to do with implants like hip implants I don't know if it was to drive it in or what but it's nothing more than a little nut driver socket wrench that's what it is interesting though and thank you to the people that are sending me this stuff here's a short quiz for you this is from popular mechanics many years ago Here's a man filing. What is he all doing wrong in this expensive ad? And here's the most interesting piece from Sarah. And I thought no one would get this because I had not a clue. Just not a clue. I've been in chemistry labs all my life. I took chemistry, physics. I hung around sometimes in the chemistry lab where I worked, where I was teaching. Never ever did I see one of these. Many people thought that it was for cutting gaskets, such as this cork gasket. But uh, that is not the purpose, although it probably would work for that. This is the Welch catalog, scientific catalog from 1961. You know, they were as thick as a Sears catalog. And uh, here it is, only apparently in a different brand. And it's called uh, Cork Borer. Here's some other tools as well on this page. There's a Cork Borer cork knife, cork press, and this is the tool used to sharpen the cork borers. Well, who wants to bore a cork anyway? I originally thought that all the corks like this that were used in a lab to make Frankenstein apparatus were, were purchased that way, but apparently you bore them yourself like that for whatever the purpose is in the laboratory and uh, these are used to bore it and supposedly the the numbers on here represent the different sizes of glass tubing at least that's what I was told you can see there's numbers on there well now I know because from time to time I have to put a hole in a cork and I guess it would work on a real Portuguese type cork but I think rubber ones are the one they're commonly using now. But boy, this, the older ones just are harder than a rock. 
but I have from time to time tried to drill a hole in this just with a twist drill and it's bordering on the impossible so I guess that I thought these were all molded in there at, a, at the factory so you didn't have to suffer the heartache of trying to drill a hole in your corks. By the way, you know, cork used to be a dime, now it's like a dollar fifty at Ace Hardware. Well, let's see if this works on a real cork. Not quite all the way through. Yeah, there it is. Looks like heck on the other side, of course. If I would have held it down a little harder on a piece of wood, I suppose it would have worked. And then this is the ramrod used to remove the core. And there it is. So it worked. The only thing is, I think the reason I never saw one in the lab, the teacher had to keep it hidden. The kids, of course, would immediately use the correct size and steal it for smoking or doing some other crazy thing. I shouldn't be telling you this, but this is the reality of it. And the other thing is they would they would be trying to bang it on something to get the, the core out of there and would ruin them. So they had to be hidden from the students, and that is probably why I never actually saw one. And the teacher did all that prep stuff. No, he didn't. I had a chemistry teacher who didn't do any prep for anything, and, and he was not a good teacher. Well, let's see how this would work with cork gaskets and I suppose other gasket material as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's what I'll be using it for sooner or later. Let's try a couple other. Let's try a big one. I didn't press quite hard enough, I'll do it again. Now that's one that needs to be sharpened. Oh, that's the one that's rolled over, no wonder that didn't work. Yeah. And regular gasket material, paper. Boy, no wonder many people said uh, that it was for making gaskets. It sure works great for that. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. This is Tubal Kane, and I'll see you in my next video. So long for now.